Could a secret that people keep in the bedroom land them in the courtroom? Get herpes, end up in court? In Sioux Falls, South Dakota, a prominent business owner was sued by his former fiance and employee for failing to disclose that he had genital herpes before they started their relationship. And in California, two women filed a suit against an actor claiming he intentionally concealed that he had herpes and knowingly infected the women. Should people infected with STDs like herpes have a legal responsibility to disclose this information? Or do we have the right to keep our health matters behind closed doors? Legal analyst Anahita Sadagatfar joins us with more insight onto this story. Do you have a purely legal, we're not talking about moral or ethical okay. obligation, do you have a legal obligation to inform your partner if you have an STD? Absolutely, in most states you have a legal obligation to inform a sex partner if you have an STD before you have sex with them. And if you don't do that and they contract the STD, you can be held civilly an liable for that. An incurable STD well, or any STD? Any STD, but we mainly see these with incurable STDs like herpes and HIV. and in fact, in some states, it goes even further because it says even if the person didn't contract the STD from you, merely exposing them to that STD is enough for you to be well, sued. The problem How can is you? most people don't even know if they have herpes. So let's okay. step back, and, and before we continue the conversation, I want to teach the audience here. So HSV2 in this case, which is primarily genital herpes, one in six Americans carry it. But in most cases, 80 plus percent of people don't know they have it. Right. When you go get tested for sexually transmitted diseases, this is usually not a part of the panel. And it's interesting, that's why it's actually running rampant in our society right. because most people don't have it. So if you didn't know you had it, yes. and theoretically, because I don't even know how you could prove how you gave it to someone else, are you still legally obligated in court? Could you be sued? Yeah. It gets a little more complicated in those situations, but yes, in some states you can, if you should have known. The question is, what, how can you prove that that particular person gave exactly. you the STD? Be That's an get excellent a question, and that is the hurdle that a lot of these plaintiffs have to prove in these lawsuits is what we call causation. You have to be able to prove with evidence that you contracted that STD from that particular defendant and from nobody else. And that's when your medical records come into play, you have to do depth positions but would that person yeah, you can't prove that, that though test. because you unless you absolutely. I mean you can you can actually even catch HSV without having sex mm -hmm. I yeah. mean the interesting thing is it's a it's a transmitted through skin to skin contact if you can sue which is I believe you said you can mm -hmm. how much money what sort of damages could you possibly expect right so it depends on case by case basis but really the damages focus on not just medical bills prescription medications but also really emotional distress how much emotional distress did this individual sustain knowing that they now have a possibly incurable disease if it's HIV or something that can't go away like herpes so that's really what the courts want to look at how traumatic was this for, th for this particular plaintiff and if that individual did didn't contract it, you can still sue, like I said, and those emotional damages are just knowing that you possibly could have been exposed. What troubles me in a litigious society is if there's two individuals, neither of them, let's just theoretically say neither of them knows they have right. or don't have it, and someone ends up with it, I just don't understand how you could then go to court and say, well, this person is a prominent member of society, and I'm gonna sue them so that quietly they have to resolve it out of court, well, right. pay and me the, a million the dollars. Agreed it to just have seems sex going into it, and uh, you know, unfortunately, so many <laughs> of these stories are after the fact, yeah. after a breakup. Mm -hmm. and that, exactly. That, that right. There's people that are unhappy with the relationship, and these high profile cases all involve people that have money that you can collect something on if you. It's a scary you, statistic yep. because we have not talked about this enough. It's one in four women carry this. Mm -hmm. right. One in four women, one in eight men. It's, it's easier for a woman to catch it. Um, and, and so, like, those numbers are staggering if you think about it. And that's why I think about it in terms of how would you ever possibly prove well, it? I just I, don't, I, mean, I, don't, I don't think you make a case that maybe we should be doing more testing on herpes yes. given, given that as the great Eddie Murphy said, herpes is for life. It's like luggage. <laughs> you carry it around for forever. I mean, I, I want to make light of it, but it's true. I, I think the key takeaway here and, and where I come at it medically is if you enter into a new partnership and you want to know you're safe, you literally should, you should go get tested. Your partner should go get tested. You should share each other's lab results. If you're worried about herpes, you have to specifically ask to be tested for HSV-1 and HSV-2 and you sh if you want to share those results, 
That's to me where we, we need to get to in a society. Yeah.